Only the sky is the limit in the virtual worlds we built. But when you start moving around in the physical world at the same time, you first have to think about how to make the virtual and physical coexist. In the Designing for Physical Boundaries episode, we saw how physical limits can impact the augmented reality you are in and how they can prevent you from going places in the virtual experience. My name is Nikolai, and in this episode, I'm going to show you how to deal with size limits in the virtual world. When you are building augmented reality experiences that allow the users to move around, you also have to think about the size of the virtual experience you're building. If your world is very small, the user may accidentally walk out of it. As a developer, when the virtual world is smaller than the physical world, you've got a challenge to make sure that the user stay within it. That is, you need to handle the virtual boundaries. For example, if you create an icy world with a single and small ice flow for your user's penguin, an immediate issue is that it's tempting for the user to jump off of it. Since the virtual world is smaller than their physical room, what do you want to happen when they cross the limit of the virtual world? There is a simple technique that keeps the user on the ice flow. Let the ice follow the user. You can accomplish this by putting an invisible wall around the virtual world. When the user runs into that bounding box and keeps going, they move the wall and the whole world will ahead of them. It is also possible to make virtual objects appear solid to the user by adding colliders around them. Pushing against the collider will also move the whole world. However, if the collider is placed poorly, it can make parts of the virtual world become inaccessible. If the user walks into a solid rock on the ice, they will effectively push it in front of them. While a solid object can cause places to become inaccessible, it does prevent the user from walking straight through it, which is neither natural nor great if the object is large and hollow. The user may then get lost inside it, and you must make sure that they can find their way out of it again. If they continue to walk, they may eventually push the rock through a solid physical obstacle, such as a wall or a door. If you are not careful about aligning the virtual world with the physical world, your users could be at risk of inadvertently walking out of the room or into obstacles like walls. So you should design to minimize that. Since the rock is now pushed onto the other side of the physical obstacle, it is going to be hard for the user to get to it in the future. There are workarounds for this situation, such as the clutch and teleportation modes. We discussed these in the Designing for Physical Boundaries episode. As an alternative solution, you could instead allow the user to jump off the ice and gradually let them know that they are exiting the experience. In this example, we let the physical world bleed through as the user approaches the boundary of the virtual. It quite literally informs the user that they are leaving the virtual space and entering reality again. It also makes it really easy for them to go back again. They can simply turn around and walk back where they came from to return to the virtual experience. Finally, you could completely eliminate all these issues by procedurally extending the size of the virtual world to fit the physical surroundings by using the depth sensor. As a developer, this does entail more work, but makes for an experience that works in more places. In this example, we are adding blocks as the user moves beyond the limits of the current populated zone. In the Penguin game, this same idea could be used to automate the generation of ice. The user would then never run out of places to move to, as their icy world would be boundless. It's not only the physical world that constrains us. The virtual world can do that too. You can put a fence around the virtual world, let the world follow the user, or procedurally extend the world as the user moves around. Some are easier to implement, but harder to use, and you have to consider what's best for your situation. There may also be other ways to handle these edge cases, and we'd love to hear what you have come up with. So visit our Google Plus community and join us on our journey we are excited to see what you will build with Project Tango.